not claiming to be any sort of um, expert when it comes to Christmas decorating, um, but I'm a big fan of Christmas, so I gave it, you know, I, d I did my best. Welcome uh, to a very special Christmas episode of tonight's double feature. My name is Paul, uh, and as you can see, it's a Lindsay Lohan Christmas. It absolutely is. We're going to get to the first movie in just a second, but I want to say stick around because in a minute we're going to be doing uh, a little taste test of a Christmas concoction that everybody has been talking about, especially Lindsay Lohan. So stick around for that. But up first, it's been a great holiday season for me so far. In 2022, we have got a new Christmas movie from Lilo herself. I'm a, what I like to call, Lindsay Lowe fan. I'm proud about it. And this is very exciting that we have a new Lindsay Lohan Christmas movie from Netflix. Now, obviously, because it's a uh, Netflix movie, uh, I don't have a physical copy of it here. It's exclusive to Netflix if you want to go watch it. And this movie, Falling for Christmas, is what it's called. And I actually, you know, every uh, holiday season, I do a little thing called Paul's 35 Nights of Christmas. I watch 35 Christmas movies in a row every night because I'm insane. And I actually started this year with... Lilo herself in this new Netflix movie, Falling for Christmas. And uh, so it was very exciting to be able to, you know, kick off the holiday season with Lilo the night after Thanksgiving. I have very specific rules, of course, about when you should and should not be watching um, thanks, uh, Christmas movies. And it starts the night after Thanksgiving. That is when it is legally allowed, just so you guys are aware. And this movie, Falling for Christmas, movie number one tonight, um, it was okay. <laughs> you know, uh, I watched it and there were a lot of the, I guess you would say, stereotypical, traditional, sort of Hallmark-ish movie tropes that go along with this sort of film. Um... Lindsay basically plays a um, like a Paris Hilton type character where she is her dad owns all these hotels, you know, and she's very rich. She's very, you know, kind of snobby, kind of kind of a snooty character who needs to learn some lessons. You know, she needs she needs to uh, discover the holiday spirit and kind of uh, reboot her life a little bit. She's got this, uh, fiance who, yeah, sucks. I, he's this, uh, you know, like Instagram influencer type guy, and he's constantly taking photos of her and of himself. Pretty much from there, I mean, I'm not going to get too deep into spoiler territory if you want to watch it, which I would say that you should, you know, if you got Netflix and you, uh, are in the mood for a a very festive Lilo uh, Christmas movie, then this is it, you know, because uh, basically what happens towards the beginning here, the, sort of the inciting incident, is that she goes on this ski trip and she gets and she hits a tree, very um, Sonny Bono hits a tree while skiing situation. Doesn't kill her, fortunately, but it uh, gives her this sort of am amnesia where she can't remember who she is and all this stuff. And this guy finds her on the ski slopes and takes her in. But it's fun to watch. Uh, it's obviously, it's great to see Lilo doing her thing. She is a talented actress and she can still bring some emotion to her roles. There's some, uh, you know, some emotional moments in the film where she actually tears up and all this stuff, you know, and she definitely, unless that's the other movie. I was probably both movies. 
The point is, Lilo still got it. It'll get you into the holiday spirit if you're not there already, which you should be, because at the time of this recording, uh, it's December, so you need to, you need to be uh, feeling festive. If you're watching this in May or something, then that's okay, obviously. Don't watch it. I would say don't watch it. Wait until next Christmas, or at least after Thanksgiving, to make sure that you are watching Christmas films at the legal, within the legal time frame of what society and what I dictate that you should be doing. Now, as promised, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but I'm so excited to to give this a shot. Lilo has been promoting this new, well, not new, but like promoting something for Pepsi. And I have a Pepsi right here. So we're going to get into this. It's called Pilk. And this is something that I hadn't heard of before, but apparently people do this thing or have been doing this thing where they mix a soda, a Pepsi, with milk. And it's supposedly this holiday thing or at least Lilo and Pepsi want to turn it into a holiday thing. She's been promoting it. I don't think it's necessarily tied into Falling for Christmas because I don't remember her uh, drinking a, a pilk in the movie. But this is the, the thing that she's doing, promoting it. And so I thought that we would give it a try here tonight on tonight's double feature. But I don't drink milk. I'm not eight years old. So what I have to go to mix with here is some oat milk from Planet Oat. Um, and I've had this before. This is really tasty stuff. If you're someone who is a vegan or a vegetarian uh, or just someone who's trying to, uh, you know, improve their health a little bit by not uh, consuming dairy, Planet Oat, oat milk is uh, what you should try. And I got some vanilla here. I kind of thought that that might help add to the flavor. So before we get into our next movie, we're going to give it a shot. I got a very festive um, glass, Christmas glass here. Got some nice, you know, sort of uh, holly and everything around the around the glass. And I'm just really excited to, to get into this, to give it a shot. So... Let's crack open our Pepsi. This is a brand new Pepsi. We'll just uh, give it a little taste and see what happens. You hear that? Yeah. And Lilo, if you're watching this, I would recommend uh, giving this a shot rather than regular milk so if you're watching give give uh, oat milk a shot with uh, Pepsi with your pilk sometime all right this is a big hefty bottle of planet oak so I got to make sure that I don't spill because I spill stuff all the time here we go can you see that here we go I'm gonna add our oat milk to our Pepsi It doesn't look very appetizing. It looks, well, it looks like chocolate milk, actually. But there's Pepsi in it. Lindsay, cheers. I hope you're having a very happy holiday season, and I hope you have a great Christmas. Here's to you. Cheers. Taste. You know what? I'm still drinking it, so it must not be... I must not hate it too much. Um, it's interesting. It's um, It takes the carbonation and kind of smooths it out a little bit. You know, the oat milk kind of flattens it out a little bit, which I would think wouldn't work, but... Starting to think that maybe it does. Yeah, it's actually not bad. I'll be damned. Pilk. 
I'm not, you know, a Pepsi guy necessarily. I'm really trying to not drink much soda at all anymore. Um, but I don't mind a Pepsi either. You know, I'm not some like crazy Coke person. Get a fancy glass though, because the fancy, I think that the fancy glass really helps out a lot. I'm going to continue to sip on this, but we got to get, it's tonight's double feature. We got to get into our second film here. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're you're thinking, well, clearly we have Lilo on the screen here from 2005 doing her thing in a little film called Mean Girls. And look, obviously, if you want to watch Mean Girls during Christmas time, that is legal for you to do. And that and uh, Falling for Christmas and Mean Girls would be a perfectly fine double feature. But, surprise, surprise, that's not what we're doing tonight. For our second movie, we got a little something called I Know Who Killed Me. Now, this movie stars Lindsay Lohan. I want to say that it came out in 2007. Yeah, 2007. Okay, so right after Mean Girls. You could, if you wanted to, you could actually do Mean Girls and I Know Who Killed Me. Now, yes, this is not a Christmas movie. I'm just going to be perfectly honest with everybody. There is no Christmas activity, Christmas decor, Christmas presents, Christmas pilk, nothing. There's, there's, this is not a Christmas movie, okay? I'm just being upfront about that. But the great thing about Christmas is that you don't always have to watch Christmas movies during Christmas. That's the thing. You can only watch Christmas movies during the Christmas season, but a lot of times what I end up doing is I'll watch a Christmas movie and then cleanse the palate with a non-Christmas movie because you don't want to get burnt out. That's my whole point. You got you to gotta continue to mix it up during the holiday season. So I know who, who Killed Me is a great way to do that. And I actually have two copies here. I have the Blu-ray as well, which I'm giving to my sister for Christmas, which is probably not a good idea now that I think about it. And I hope that she's not watching this video. But this is what she's getting for Christmas, among other things. Calm down. It's very much a psychological thriller. It's very much, um, you know, trying to figure out who killed her. And I know that that sounds weird, but that's what the movie's about. And Lilo is very much in this movie. She's the star. And let me tell you, uh, I watched this again for the, uh, the other night for the first time in a long time. And Lilo is, well, I tell you what, I took a couple pictures while I was watching the movie. I'll put them up right now. Lilo is power packed in this movie. She plays a stripper named, uh, Dakota. And as you can see by these pictures that I took from the film, she's actually looking pretty festive in her stripper gear. It's red. It's very, uh, it's not Christmas themed, but it's red. So that's pretty cool. She also, I didn't think about this until just now. This is the, this is the cool connection. She also has amnesia in this film. She goes through a situation. And again, I won't get too deep into spoilers in case you want to watch it, which you definitely should. But um, she gets amnesia and she wakes up in the hospital and she doesn't know what happened. And I will give a little bit of a, like, I guess, content warning here because I was really surprised when I watched this again the other night that it is, there's some gnarly stuff in this movie. It is pretty graphic in some spots. It's kind of a horror. There's definitely some horror elements to this film. I know who killed me. But that being said, if you're into, if you think that you can handle that and you like a good psychological thriller, it wasn't very good. But you should still watch it um, because Lilo, you know, and and um, it's it's shot well. The budget I, I think was you know pretty decent. It it keeps it holds your attention. There's some interesting twists and turns. I didn't really even understand what happened at the end, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, a little bit of a head scratcher. But Lilo makes it worth it. I think a great Christmas time double feature that is legal to do would be 
falling for Christmas, and I know who killed me. With that being said, uh, let's see, I don't, you know what, I don't have a um, falling for Christmas box cover, but maybe I can fake it here with uh, my two copies of I Know Who Killed Me. I hope that you have a great holiday season. I hope you have a great Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. Uh, whatever you choose to celebrate, or if you don't celebrate at all, that's okay too, obviously. I hope you have a great end of your year, and I hope that you check out Falling for Christmas on Netflix, and I Know Who Killed Me, which I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere right now. I think it's actually kind of a little uh, difficult to get your hands on, so if you want to come over, you got some time if you want to come over to my place to watch it. I'll watch it again with you. You know, I don't care. Thank you for watching. Drink pilk.